Hi, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Nicole Schmeider, Marketing Specialist here at DocuWare, and I'll be moderating the webinar today, How to Run Your HR Department Better Than Ever with this Ready-to-Use Employee Management Software. Today, you'll hear from Ann Valaitis, Senior Consultant at Keypoint Intelligence, along with Tim Stevens, Regional Sales Director at DocuWare. So for the first 10 minutes, Ann will go over um, some data she has on H how HR departments are operating today, along with some recommendations that you will find useful. And then Tim will come in, he'll introduce the DocuWare for Employee Management software solution and do a live demo so you can see it in action. And then we'll have it, uh, we'll open it up for Q&A at the end of the session. And now I'll pass it off to Anne. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, hello, again, I am Ann Valaitis. I'm very fortunate to be here today with DocuWare and to be given the opportunity to share some of our research and insights uh, from our studies and analysis that we compile. I am personally responsible for the image scanning, vertical market, and solutions practices area within Keypoint Intelligence, and I've been here for about 12 years now. So Keypoint is a market research and consulting company. We're a global company. We operate in a variety of locations and have people and research cover all over the planet. And we look to expand really out of our, uh, just out of the US for our reach for content and analysis. And we have been in business for about 35 years. So vertical markets and the processes that drive them have been a key focus area for us for many years now. We have uh, followed vendors, providers, as they pivot and look to be more targeted towards specific vertical markets and the processes which drive your business, frankly. And each vertical market, we look to identify five or seven processes. We map them out and then we understand through interviews and surveys and visits how the processes are conducted now and how often they happen. So once we began this research, we really looked to see how primarily paper-driven processes are being transformed to be more digital and automated, and that understanding that will surely provide even more efficiency and productivity. So that's some of what we'll look at today. So let's begin to talk about some of the research results that Keypoint has as it rel uh, relates to HR and its functions. So in this chart, you'll see the collection of identified HR processes down that left-hand side there and how they're handled currently. From this, we see that the majority of these are being managed in-house. So some common outsourced areas, though, are benefits and payroll, and this varies slightly depending on the company size. But overall, these processes are being, being driven within the company itself, probably being handled by people on this phone call. So Keypoint feels that customers um, really can look to vendors that will help the HR department with simple and robust solutions. And we're going to show some of those areas and key areas where uh, solutions and technology really can affect these areas. So digging deeper, we see in this chart that the handling of employee records is really varied. Uh, depending on the vertical market, we see differences in how the records themselves are being kept. In education, you see that they have the largest response to keeping a hard copy for each employee or student as it would be, followed by the government. You know, we feel that paper records can create a bottleneck uh, to the process and developing an electronic workflow can definitely create efficiencies. So within employee records, there are a number of items that can be compiled within the, within the file itself. So here we have the I-9 form, which you're familiar with. It's used to verify an I, uh, the identity of employees and, and so that they're authorized to work and be uh, employed uh, in the US. In most cases, we see here that those are paper-based uh, in the individual employee file. And we can see in contrast that things like benefits are often electronic or at least a combination of electronic and paper. So just understanding what some of the processes, how they've transitioned, and some of them are still very paper-based and some have begun um, to transform. So we did see in our research that even though job applicants are tracked in a system of some sort, 62% of the respondents said that they were also maintaining a hard copy of the relevant paperwork. So whether it was um, 
uh, identity documentation, uh, letters of recommendation. This is a common situation. And we see that end user behavior often creates the need for paper, habits, you know, some type of specific preference for paper, or some internal policy that leads people to maintain paper copies. And that's oftentimes a perceived need within uh, the company to keep paper when in fact they don't need to keep it and can root it out of a system and create more efficiencies and workflows. So along the HR process continuum, things like onboarding is another common process for new employees, um, whether it's uh, customers or patients also. So onboarding, uh, can be a variety of, uh, of different things. But this chart examines a few items in that process and how they're handled. So for example, uh, business cards. Uh, the, when they're ordered for new employees, it's, it's quite a manual process we found. And 44% responded that they handle it on paper or some sort of form is being used and, and filled out and it's a manual process. But things such as new employee handling of IT equipment seems to have become more automated and therefore <clears throat> followed as 51% that it was handled within the tracking system itself. So just some differences between some of the areas when we talk about onboarding new employees and some of these processes. New employees are often provided with a good deal of information upon employment. So we see from this chart, many of those items are provided in paper format. And for many of the HR professionals that we spoke to for our research, it often was handled at, as paper because each item was coming from a separate system. So if we think about that for a moment, when you're hired into a new company and you get something uh, such as a welcome packet, maybe a week or two after you start, you're getting benefits information or calendars or things about the company itself. All of them are paper and they're often compiled because they all came from different systems. So the ability to understand how to bring together these disparate systems and create more efficiency is really something that we need to think about and how paper is handled in a lot of these um, new areas. So let's look at some of the documents used for the following processes and how they're handled currently. So we see things such as Uh, sorry, such as um, employee transfers and promotions and reviews and ra raises are all mainly paper-based in nature. And in some cases, we discovered that items that require a signature were likely to be paper and move from person to person for approvals. Paper really was easier for that purpose and creates some slowdowns and creates some bottlenecks within it while waiting for these approvals to kind of work across um, all these different areas. So understanding how to improve that process can go a long way in kind of cutting down that life cycle of an approval. So after understanding some of the process areas and the fundamental use of paper in specific processes, we now wanted to gauge the time intensity of the processes themselves. So from le left to right, it's easy um, to, to see the most time intensive. So you can look at that bright blue and orange on the right to see how people view these processes. And again, performance reviews, onboarding, applications, even grievances and in injuries were all looked at as very time intensive. And we just showed you in the, in the slides before that, that a lot of that was done on paper. So we're making a correlation between paper process and the time intensity of it as well. So the important factors and priorities, um, we asked respondents if they felt that these processes uh, could be improved with software technology. And orange and the blue, again, combine to show many agree that these processes can be approved, uh, improved with software technology. So it's important to understand also that your community and your constituents are understanding and looking at improving these areas and uh, software and workflow technology can certainly be a place um, uh, to invest and to do some research. So when addressing HR, um, according to our research, things like meeting compliance and keeping employee documentation confidential and the accuracy of the information were all ranked high among the community. And as we mentioned before, this can be a cumbersome process if it's paper-based. 
and these workflow processes, uh, exchanging these documents can really take a lot of time. Uh, the frequency that this happens is very high. So we're understanding that that has a lot to do with some of these areas as well. So the main barriers to automation Uh, in this HR research was a lack of software tools. So complex and internal processes, and of course the use of paper in the organization can really be a barrier um, to automation and creating efficiencies uh, within this as well. So when we examine categories of investment and IT solutions to address specific areas uh, within business, we see from this chart that areas such as document management and document security and forms processing were important. And at the top, we see though that cloud and document content solutions uh, as an area of high in, in investment consideration. So it's interesting to see that, and Tim's going to show you that a web-based solution and a cloud-based solution is something that um, the community and, and your constituents are really looking at, looking to invest. So in review, we see many areas and opportunities for workflow and automation improvements from recruiting to onboarding to training. Uh, we see from our research needs to improve and even upgrade existing processes um, going forward. We do see a movement to automation as a means to streamline common practices, tasks and processes, employee records seems to be an unmet area of digitization and um, if transformed it certainly could provide a much needed boost of productivity we're watching vendors offering solutions targeting these specific areas where in the past we saw more of a focus on a broad process that went to the entire company and maybe not to a specific department or even down to a process level and that's really important uh, for you to understand that there are targeted solutions just for the HR area and even the processes within the HR area so that's good news um, in addition to the solutions bringing efficiency and productivity which I've said um, many times there's also a need uh, for security and compliance controls we know that's important so we're also being uh, they're also being addressed by some of these content solutions and these providers as a way to ensure that your needs are being uh, met and, and all of uh, the things that are important to your organization for sure as well. So I now want to hand this over to Tim uh, for his portion. So, Tim? Thank you, Anne. Good information in regards to the situation that's out there for HR, uh, but there are many challenges, and that's what Anne's addressing. So how does DocuWare for employee management address those? We know that records are everywhere in many different silos. With, with DocuWare, they can be centralized, organized, and very safe. Instead of the overwhelming administrative effort and time that it takes in regards to not only searching, but processing it, it can be, we basically have ready to use workflows to make everyone more productive and more effective. And for security, the auditing, the data, well, it's read, audit ready, compliant with a variety of areas that you can be able to be safe and secure and according to your uh, retention schedules as well. So with all this, what does it really mean? It really means you can get up and running in just days. It is built on DocuWare Cloud. It's a completely pre-configured application, fast and simplified. So why don't we take a look at that and see HR automation in action. So first take a look at the DocuWare interface. Uh, this is a completely browser-based application. So that means there's nothing that you need to download on your PC or desktop. All of your interaction with documents is through the browser. On the left-hand side, we have what are called trays or inboxes. This is where documents go in before being stored in a permit location that we call the file cabinet. You can also take a look at it in this way. Now, in regarding searching for documents, you can search for documents by ways of one or more index values. I can show you here. And also, if you needed to have a task which are associated with workflow, they would be in your task button right here. So you're going to see this be very prevalently used in this demonstration today. 
And in my presentation, I have two people that are interacting. One is Simon Stone for the company TBS EM. He is the director of HR. And the other person is Elizabeth Cash. And Elizabeth Cash is head of finance. And she has an open position to fulfill within her department for a new staff accountant. So how would this process for onboarding a new employee work within DocuWare? We'll show you how. First of all, DocuWare has electronic forms, web forms that we have already developed so that you can have such as for a new hire requisition, which Elizabeth must do. So I, in the interest of time, I filled out a little information that she would fill in regarding the employee that she's looking to hire and also the projected start date in required skills and maybe the description that's already approved by the HR department. Now, if one of those was not in there, it says, please select from this list of approved job descriptions. There's another workflow to basically get one approved so they would be in this job description list. But all that she does is submit it. Where does it go? Well, it goes on somebody's task list because that's responsible for that particular application. As you can see, there's a task list right there. They would take a look at it. See, there's a new requisition form. Double click on it and view it in an HTML5 viewer. They realize, oh, Ann has a new higher requisition form. I can see that it's a budgeted position. She's looking for a staff accountant. Now, if I rejected as a HR person and would understand the reason why, because it would be in there and we would send her an email, but they decide to post this opportunity for employment with the various applications such as Monster and Indeed and all of the things that you can do to let everybody know this position is available. Now, where the actual document goes is in someone's list. And a list is sort of like a predefined result list. There's the new hire requisition, so you can be able to reference it in regards to looking at resumes that are coming in. Now, resumes will come in, and where would you put them? Into the tray. There are 11 different ways you can put documents into this tray. You can scan, you can drag and drop, you can print with a document printer. We can also monitor um, folders in Outlook or Gmail. So they will go into the tray to be stored into a permanent storage record, which we have as resumes. When you hit store or drag and drop, we have pre-designed fields to store the data from the document or dropdowns or typing in, but the document has been OCR. So the reason why this was pre-filled just to save a little time is I was able to use my mouse to actually highlight areas in this, such as tax preparation and let go to be fulfilled in these fields so that people can be able to find this document by all the specific data. Now, when you store it away, that's in there, but now someone would need to review that because maybe there is an open position. And within that, the tasks would be associated with that person who needs to review those. So there is a task. Everybody goes to the task list because that's their role and they're not having to go back and forth in emails and paper. They would take a look at it. They're looking at uh, this resume, Joe Candidate. They would go, hmm, I remember that in my list that there is an opportunity for a new hire requisition with Elizabeth Cash. So. I could reject it because there's no position available. We will email Joe because we do have his email address, or I could assign it to the decision maker. In this particular case, Elizabeth Cash should take a look at it. And all you do is confirm. You notice that you're not going back and forth. You're just basically using one application to do so. Now, in regards to Elizabeth Cash, she would see in her task right here something to review. Oh, review a candidate. Take a look at it, see it in the viewer. And what would they or her options be, I do like this. I want to interview him by phone, in person. I could reject it, no follow-up, or it might go to another interviewer as well. So she could have instructions, say, you know, review uh, the, a website before coming in. And I could give it the three dates. So let's say um, she really needs to hire somebody quickly, so she's going to do it tomorrow. All right, and I could obviously put in particular times as well. I could put in a, a time for nine o'clock because she's looking at her calendar. She also has an 11 o'clock available. And she also has a two o'clock. All she does is confirm. She doesn't contact the candidate because HR people don't do that. That's the role of the HR person. So within this, a task would be associated with arranging a meeting. Elizabeth does want to see him. So raise the time. Oh, these are the three dates. You talk to Joe candidate. He says, well, I think I really want to get going, so why don't we do it for tomorrow at 9 o'clock? So with doing so, you can put that in and confirm. Again, we're going back and forth 
but we're not really distributing a document through emails and paper and all of the data that Ann had mentioned. So in regards to that, getting back to Elizabeth Cash, waiting for that person to have an interview. He does a great job. Now we could reject, we could go for more interviews, the same process would happen, but we're gonna hire this person in the interest of moving this forward. And when you do hire or uh, let's say, uh, send offer and confirm. Now it's not the role of Ms. Elizabeth to hire this person, it's the role of the HR person. So again, as you can see, this is in real time. And so when people use DocuWare as a their dashboard or their digital desk to do what they need to be doing, they can see, okay, I'd need to send an offer letter. Obviously it says send the offer letter in the normal corporate manner. And in most cases, it's a paper document that goes to that person. But once I send it, I can confirm. And if you notice also on the right-hand side, there's a lot of emails going out. That's actually going to Joe Candidate. Yes, we have his email address and we can be able to address that. So we were, right now he's getting a particular offer letter and we're waiting for that to come back. So in so doing so, we're waiting for Joe to consider that. He sees that there is an offer letter going out and the HR person is waiting for his response. Where is it? It's right here in the workflow. So luckily Joe decides to consider the job and we put in the date that he's going to start, which is the same date that Elizabeth Cash would like to have him do so. You confirm, and we're almost there. So here's the list. First of all, people would need to reference the list and realize this particular requisition has been completed. And so we have a stamp. If you notice on the right-hand side, I'm going to go to a stamp saying the position is filled. And so within this, you can put your candidate, You can save the start date on here. It should be on Monday. You can set the stamp right here. You notice we're doing the other ones automatically, but when you do so, a couple things will happen. Number one, it goes off the queue of your list. Nothing to be referenced because it's already been fulfilled. And there's more that Elizabeth Cash will be doing. But I wanna show you exactly what the candidate is getting. When we put away his resume, we have his email address. So. I actually put in my email address because, just spoiler alert, there's really no Joe candidate. So in regards to that, I'm gonna open up my email here. And you're gonna see document notifications. They're gonna see that, dear Joe, your resume has begun our review process. It's all part of workflow, is to eliminate your time and needing to do so. You confirm that you reviewed this resume and we're gonna check it out. If he was denied, that email will go too. Thank you very much for your resume. We, I'd like to inform you, we have an opposition. Based on your conversation, Elizabeth Cash would like to have you to come in tomorrow at nine o'clock. Dear Joe, congratulations. Interview process is excellent. So we'd like to offer you something. Now, here's when he sends the offer letter. We also have the ability to send a form to Joe. And when he clicks this particular URL, here's what he will receive. Getting back to Elizabeth, it's where He'll to receive a new employment, employee enrollment form. He can fill in all the information. There can be a more extensive need if they need to, to change this. But when he submits this right here, and by the way, he'd have to make sure everything is fulfilled completely, that data that he's filling in will also go into the forms that you currently now need to store, such as I-9s and uh, contact information. So in regards to this, instead of going to Elizabeth Cash, I'm gonna to go to Simon Stone to search in the file cabinet for a particular document. So in this case, I'll, I'll look for the first name of somebody named Joe and search for that. Oop, let's do it for this one. That was the wrong, that, that was, there we go. So that was just the wrong file cabinet. So as you can see, these are the doc types we have associated with Joe Candidate. And look at the security level. That means if Joe had the rights or had a license of DocuWare, he would only be able to see the W-4. For HR, they can see everything, but this specifically, emergency contact and I-9, only they can see. Elizabeth Cash from the department level couldn't only see that. So the security is right to the document level. And I do want to change this particular search here. And instead of Joe, I can reset it. I want to show something that a lot of people that do like to see from HR. So I'll get rid of the Joe and I'm going to look for a doc type. 
because every and all doc types could be in DocuWare. All of these applications, instead of going through your network drives or your file cabinets, can be in here. So on this side, a lot of people sometimes have audits for I-9s, and people say, could you get them to me? In a matter of seconds, I can get everyone's I-9 because it is in DocuWare from the form that was filled in. In regards to Joe Candidate, I double-click on it and take a look at it. You can see that the data that we had on our form got filled in the I-9 here. People many times still have to print it out, have them sign physically, and scan it back. Again, it could go back into DocuWare very easily. So the ability to find any and all documents is very, very simple in DocuWare. Now, are we done? No. There's some things more that we need to do. So right now I'm going to show you Elizabeth Cash has to prepare for Joe coming in the office. So within that, we have a submitting a, a, a provisioning workflow where he, she would, excuse me, I'll just go right here. This is the last one, provisioning checklist. And within this, you could say who needs to be prepared for Joe coming into the office. All of these people might need to have standard forms. What they could do is a standard options, or they could be a little bit more detailed. As you can see, our forms are very dynamic. So they may need to do a little bit more for his preparation and such. But the whole point is, is when she fills in these areas and submits the form for the right people, for the people to get what they need to get, I'll just make sure they all get the standard options and submits it. The form is submitted. She then can say, I've done that, I requested submitted, I've confirmed that, and all of the appropriate people need to get that form as well. So, who gets it? Well, Simon Stone, I think, gets one because it went to the HR department. So you'll see his task associated with seeing things as well. I've got, I've got something else to do. So confirm the provisioning checklist and do all the things that to prepare for Joe's coming in on Monday, I could say confirm. Now, if in case somebody's out of the office or somebody needs to see what other people that need to do that, I'm going to log off here. Actually, I'll do it within, excuse me, I'll just go back to Elizabeth Cash. I'll log off and come in as myself. I could be the administrator. Tim Stevens. Log in. The whole point of this is I'm able to monitor other people in their task. I could reassign it in case it happens to be out of the office. We do have a substitution rule in here. But Peter Sanders might be out of the office. I'll do that for him. I could be his assistant. And I'll confirm the fact that we're going to be ready for Joe Candidate coming in. So within that, we're almost ready to go. He's almost ready to be Coming in on Monday morning, I'll log out here, go in as Elizabeth Cash. Log in. And see, confirm new hire. We want the, the entire process without a piece of paper. We can see everybody's workflow. If they needed to see the history, there is a history button, a reassign button if I need to. The thing is, I'm able to see everything and all everything associated with the workflow and also with uh, the documents itself. So let's look back at the process we've just seen. A manager had to fill an open position. He fills an online form that begins an automated workflow that allows the HR department to post the position and begin accepting candidate resumes. A resume is submitted and a candidate begins their journey. HR makes the initial assessment to determine if the candidate is a likely fit. The decision maker is assigned to determine if they want to speak to the candidate. As many interviews as are required to decide were controlled automatically by workflow processes. Once the decision was made to hire and web forms allow the onboarding process to begin, even before their de first day by allowing common data to be populated on forms like that I-9. And the provisioning process automatically routes tasks to only those departments required to take some action. And this is just the beginning. Now that we have a new employee, the DocuWare solution for employee management will automate other aspects of workflow like PT accrual process, can simplify paid time off requisitions and automate performance appraisals, processes, and, and you name it. We can actually provide employee management services from hire to retire. And now, as I said, the interesting part is what we just saw can be configured and in production in really a matter of days. So now it's your turn. When would you like to get started? So within this, I'm gonna get back to the PowerPoint and let Ann take it from here. 
Jimmy, Nicole. Thanks, Tim. Um, so I'd like to just highlight a testimonial from a customer who uses DocuWare for their onboarding. Um, this is from the case study in your handout section. So this is a large hospitality company. They have 26 locations. Um, they provide staff for different types of hotels, um, venues. So they get 50,000 applications a year. And using DocuWare, they're able to streamline um, their processes, secure all their documents, use the web forms and workflows to keep on top of that and have access to everything from their 26 different locations. And with that, we'll open it up for Q&A now. Um, I just want to thank Anne and Tim again for their presentations. And if you want to see more and take the next step in digitizing your HR teams and departments, definitely contact us. We want to hear from you, and we're happy to answer any questions you might have even after the webinar ends at any point. Um, so with that in mind, let's kick off the questions. So um, Anne, in your presentation, you talked about, um, you know, the importance of cloud solution implementation. Are companies really comfortable with, you know, moving to the cloud? Yeah, our our data definitely suggests that there's a level of comfort and even priority in terms of IT solutions and IT priorities within the businesses to move to the cloud. So we do know that companies are very comfortable with already having moved things like email or file management like Dropbox or Box.net. Um, and also their CRM applications are all being moved to the cloud. You could be using these right now. Um, so yeah, the comfort level with the cloud is, is very understood. It, what, what a vendor has to do to help you be comfortable with it for sure, and Tim will talk about this, is to definitely make sure that compliance and privacy and security are all addressed because that is another high priority from an IT perspective and even from a CEO, CIO perspective at all the businesses we talk to. So content and document security is very, very important. Great. Um, so Tim, just going off of um, that question, in your demo you showed the security level and it showed like departments, um, users, how granular can you get, and could you speak more to the security and confidentiality of the records stored in DocuWare? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, each file cabinet, um, if you have to have users be part of a, a group, and or they don't have to be in the group, but within they could be in a role, and in that role there could be profiles. So if you're not a part of that as a user, you don't even have access to see the file cabinet. You can't search for it, you don't even know it's there. If in a network file drive, you can still see that there could be a folder there, but you don't have access to see it, but there's something in there that you're not allowed to, DocuWare can't even do that. Same is true when you get to the document level, when you see that candidate's resume. There are things like annotations and redactions and whether you could edit it if it was in native format. You, the document security is right down to the level where some people can't even print it. Some people can't even view it, maybe they only see the data. So it's right down to the document level to the nth degree, but then there's also security for retention schedules and automatic purging and all of these things to validate uh, that uh, the audit trail of every single person who touched and what they did and the workflow of what they did it when they did it. So it's very, very granular right to the document level. And that's the reason why a lot of people move forward with us only because when they do go through any audits or issues or claims or lawsuits, they have access to the information, but can back up every bit of the uh, document from the time it was in DocuWare to the time it was destroyed. Great, thank you. So um, in your demo as well, you showed you know how different users, when they log in, they have task lists. Um, how do, what features in DocuWare keep people um, you know, on top of those? Are there, um, notifications, uh, email alerts to keep the work moving. How does that work? Well, if you notice when I was looking at my emails, I was so-called Joe candidate. I was receiving emails all the time. And that's because I'm, I don't have a task list. I'm just getting to be notified how things are along in the process without needing them to notify me. Well, it's really nice. People love getting that. But in regards to if you have a task list, you could not only see it in your task list, but we can also send an email. That email doesn't have a PDF document on it. It has a link. You authenticate. You have the same task that you saw as Elizabeth and Simon had, 
but it's opening up DocuWare from the link. So yes, you could have a lot of emails with a lot of links. Eventually, some people go, no, I'd rather just like to go to the dashboard and see all of my tasks, like whether it's on my you know, phone or whether it's in DocuWare. But yes, there are these notifications, reminders, those type of things. It all happens in emails as well. But eventually, everybody goes to DocuWare because they can do it faster and quicker in one place. Got it. That makes sense. Um, so I'd like to remind everyone again, the webinar was recorded, and I'll be sending an email out to you along with um, the handouts as well. Um, and again, we do want to hear from you. So maybe you don't have any questions right now, but something comes up or you review with your team the recording and the handouts, and you have something, definitely reach out to us anytime at contact.us.docuware.com, whether it's um, a question for Tim or Ann about the data, or we can point you in the right direction. Or if you're working with your authorized doctor partner as well, definitely reach out to them and they'll help you get started. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in. So Ann or Tim, do you have any um, concluding uh, comments before we sign off? No, I mean, if anybody is out there on the HR side, we obviously are focused here. We uh, are very scalable to any and all departments to manage documents, workforce integration. Um, doing it for 30 years so uh we and so many every industry possible so we wanted to focus on hr today and we certainly appreciate everybody's time and, and we hope that you see from using docuware there's a lot of value in regards to what the issues that are facing that ann had addressed too so we hopefully uh if you need any questions or see a little more personalized demo anything like that please reach out to us we look forward to speaking with you yeah great questions today everybody thank you all right thank you have a rest have a great rest of your day. Take care.